these are my measurements and we're gonna open a new page I'm gonna recommend doing uh, 200 inches by 200 inches since that's the largest that a that a PDF will print or 5080 millimeters um, I'm gonna change my document units here into inches but feel free to keep it in millimeters if you are centimeters if you are using those uh, sorry American here so use inches I'm just gonna paste my um, my measurements here so I can use them so here's a few keyboard shortcuts that you might want to use T equals getting text. Uh, zoom. If you have a scroll wheel and control equals zoom in, zoom in and out. Scroll wheel plus plus shift equals pan left or right and scroll wheel equals pan up or down. And I'm typing this out so you can remember. So the other t the other keyboard shortcuts you need to know if you don't already use um, either Affinity Designer or if you aren't used to uh, Adobe Illustrator. If you are used to Adobe Illustrator, congratulations! It's the same keyboard shortcuts. Um, P Will equal to a pen if I could type. Uh, v is equal to the um, basically the selector for the for the pen when you draw uh, pieces. And A equals the um, apex or the uh, corner piece selector. I don't know what it's called in Affinity Designer, to be honest. I just know I use it. So those are the keyboard shortcuts. We are going to start off with the front. Um, the back is going to be basically the same, so I'll leave you to that. I'll just do the front, and this is a very vintage way of doing it. Um, but basically, we want to make a square, a rec correction, a rectangle. And it's going to be, forgive me, I'm actually trying to work off of a vintage drafting book because uh, I don't have the stuff memorized. So we need the shoulder and the torso height. Um, so the best thing to do is get our, our rectangle, which is here, click and drag. Uh, I don't want the inside to have filling because I want to be able to put things in. So I'm going to go ahead and click this button over to the right for color. Uh, you can see that it's kind of a beige color right now. I want it to have no fill, so it's going to be that red line through it. I also want to make sure that this is black and the stroke is at least one point. Um, I typically draft in one point and if I want to use a projector file I bump up the thickness to larger thickness so I need to set the size of this uh, to the right the my shoulder width and my torso height which in this case shoulder uh, you know what I'm not going to use these because it's a little too hard because it's small I'm going to use what's in the measurements in the book so I'm assuming that you also have your own shoulder width. So the width is going to be the shoulder divided by two since it's just the front part. Um, so it's seven and three quarters according to this book. And then the torso height, let me just check the book. Current waist length is 17 and a half inches, so I'm going to make this 17 and a half inches. It's down to the lower right, or I'm putting in the measurements. But that's one half of the bodice front. So once we want to get the neck in, we have our neck measurements. Um, 
and some people will do a point and they'll origin it at this left hand side uh, I'm lazy and I don't do that but uh, they would make like a a circle if you want to make a perfect circle hold the shift as you click and drag uh, and then they use the, the move function or they add on to in the lower right hand side you can see the X and Y positions uh, but that's too much math for me so what I do is I make another square or rectangle and I set it to the width of my neck measurement which according to this is gonna be two and three eighths which is more math than I'm willing to do in my head 0.375 And then uh, the lower portion of where I need the neck hole, which is going to look about here to be, is going to be um, the neck divided by six for this example. Plus a half inch. So it's got to be the 2.375 plus a half inch. Too much math. 2.875 inches. This is just about what the neck is going to be. So if you want to make, go ahead and start making the neck, uh, the neckline, which is probably what the person who requested this actually wants to do. We're going to either click on this pen tool or the P. This also, notice when I hover over it, has a very nice uh, bracket where it tells you what the keyboard shortcut is. And this one's P. So uh, a pen tool is basically a Bezier pen. Uh, I'm going to discuss it a little bit because I'm making this for somebody who has a little experience with Affinity Designer. So if you click on one spot, you can make a line anywhere around in any length, and that's a straight line. And you can connect them all and then make a closed shape if you're done. If you don't want to make a closed shape, you just press Enter or uh, the Move Tool V. The other neat part about Bezier Pen is if you click and you click another spot and you drag it, click and drag, you can make a curve. So you see where uh, the very thin blue line is showing the curve. It shows the diameter of the curve and where the curve is going to um, be adjacent to. So we're going to make the curve for the neck here and just press enter. Of course, right before I start recording, my kids were very quiet and now they are not. So next I want to put in the shoulder, which is going to be from this, po this point here down this way. So that's going to be basically the shoulder line here and then this book says down two inches so again these are all my 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 very quick and dirty way of doing it so I don't care about the width I just need the height so it's two inches in this case and I actually recommend changing this to a different color so I know that's my draft there so I know that the blocks that are black and I apologize if you color blind um, are my basically templates because I don't have a ruler to measure it out and the red in this case is going to be my draft and I'm sighing because my kid has decided to be very noisy so now I'm going to connect the shoulder to the neck and press enter I'm done so that's the neck and the shoulder portion um, Next, I need to do the uh, sleeve, which is going to pretty much curve in from, from this point here, inwards, and then out. Which I am going to actually have to make this block a bit wider, because I need the bust point for the width, which is going to be bust measurement divided by 4, in which case nine inches wide so 
So I'll just change this one to nine inches because, and it should move just over to the right and stay in place. So now I need to put a line where I want my bus uh, for height and width. So I need it to be nine inches wide, which that is, but I need to make sure the height is the uh, distance that from my shoulder down to where the bus point should be. Uh, in this case, According to this chart, it's 10 inches from this point here. So I just want to make sure that this height is 10 inches and that it's aligned with um, aligned with the top line. So I have my bus point here, and I have to change this back to black so I can click this button here. And then I need to do the chest line, which is going to be a front width for this pattern. So you might have a slightly different one, but I'm showing you the idea on how to follow the instructions. So I need another, I need another block, which you can press Control C and then Control V. It's going to place it exactly in the same spot. And I'm going to change the height um, to the front width, which is seven inches wide. Because this is gonna be the scoop portion of the of the shoulder for your sleeve. Or if you're doing sleeveless, for your arm, basically. For your armhole. And then the height location needs to be three inches down from the neck opening. So basically, I can align this, the top of the block, at the bottom of the neck opening, which is this red curve line here, and change it over to be the height to be three inches. So you notice something here if you're really new to computer drafting, uh, it clicks into place. That's because I have this snapping on. If I turned it off, it would just free float and wouldn't click into place, and I'd have had to approximate, making sure it's close enough to where the bottom is. But I have snapping on, so it makes my life much easier. So I remember that it's this point down here. So now I'm going to make a curve that connects this point here, this end, to this point here, and then this point here to make the arm side. So I hit pen, and I'm going to make sure that it's red. So you can see that the outline, which is a hole inside of it, to indicate it's the outline, is going to be red. So I'll click here, click here, click and drag to make that nice curve, and then click here, and then make the nice curve. We're going to clean this up in a second. So I know some pattern drafting uh, books describe taking that arm size measurement and then trying to make sure that this curve matches up with it. I'll show you how to check what the what the length is in a second, but we're going to clean this up real quick by pressing A, or you can press this button here, which is the no tool. That's what I forgot it was called. And we're going to uh, fiddle with these two. And this is how you get the length change. So if you want to check the length, let's see if this works, as you click this area tool to here, and it will highlight that length. So this one says it's 9.259 inches. I'm not sure what the um, arm side length for this particular example is supposed to be, uh, but if you needed to make it a little shorter, you would make this curve less generous. If you needed longer, you'd make the curve deeper. In my case, I usually need to make my curve uh, deeper or uh, of course, with normal pattern drafting and pattern fitting, you can raise the shoulder up a little bit to make this angle so that the arm size is actually longer. So if I'm satisfied with this shape, which I typically actually wouldn't, but I'm not going to waste everyone's time while I fiddle with it. I am going to waste your time while I fiddle with it. It's bothering me. Next, uh, we can basically close out the rest of this um, if you wanted to go ahead and put in darts, for example. So I'm going to hit the pen and then close out this. This is going down to the waist. This is, of course, not hip length. If you want to do hip length, you would have to indicate the hip length. 
and I just clicked all of these to try to complete the piece. Sometimes a little finagly, did not connect these two. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I don't need it. I need to connect these two. I'm hitting the A button and trying to, okay. Trying to connect this and this, these two pieces. So you see how they're both highlighted blue and they have the dot showing up. I want to see if I can, no, I don't want to split curve, Clo close curve. That did not like me whatsoever. If this isn't working for you and it's frustrating you like it's frustrating me, I highly recommend um, just doing the pen and tracing over this one more time just to make sure you have a full complete curve so that the pieces move when you move. So I'm doing this where I'm clicking and dragging. You can make it a different color if you want to make sure it's fine. We will fix this in a second. I'll show you how to do that. Oh, that's right. I had two curves. So control Z is to undo. There we go, two curves. I will show you how to fix those in a second, don't worry. So if I, I don't like all this extra stuff here. Don't, don't, do not worry, it's fixable. We grab this little handle here and we shrink it. And then we grab the other handle and fix that. Same thing here. Basically, we want it to snap into the corner. And I'll fix that, and then we're done. Now this piece can go, can come apart all together. All we have to do now is put in the darts, if you want darts, uh, which um, my friend who requested mentioned that she's plus size, and I am also plus size, and I have an hourglass figure, so darts are important. So you want to put darts. Um, in this case, we're going to do the measurements according to this instruction. Do the measurements according to your instructions. We're just going to get the pen here. I apologize. I need to do the measurements again. So square. I'm going to make a square. It doesn't matter what size it is because I'm going to put it down to the lower left-hand corner. And in this case, it's going to be the width divided by 8 for where the dart starts. And I want to mark where the dart starts, how wide the dart is, and then how tall the dart is. So I'm going to have basically two um, rectangles abutting next to each other. So this is the first one just to indicate where the dart starts because I need the measurement. So the width in this case, it's three and a half inches. And then I need A one inch wide dart for this example. My dart is, uh, I'll show you. <laughs> it's, it's much wider. It's, it's much wider than one inch. It's just pretty wide. And then I have two darts for the skirt portion. Um, it's, it, yeah, demonstrably wider than the tiny fit model for this one. Uh, so here I've got to make it by one inch just just pretend I'm this tiny person and then um, I think we make it about two inches below the bus line or goes up to the bus line that depends on that depends on your pattern uh, some people prefer the dart to completely go to the bus line some prefer to end just below the bus line remember the uh, bus line is should be about here honestly so after that now we can put in the dart so what I want is this dart so I want this dart to go with the actual pattern so I'm gonna click on here on the dart and hold down the shift key and click on the pattern and I'm going to group them by pressing control G or right click and saying group. This way my front 
bodice will move well together. Now I know some patterns have uh, darts up here in the shoulder and or they have darts here in the arm side. You would do a similar thing. If you want to change this so that it's slightly curved so you have that nice flat line when you make a bodice, you can go and uh, modify these pieces by pressing A and then just, uh, hold on, I messed that up. Where's the add? Sometimes they have an add button. Sometimes they have an add button. So I'm gonna press shift and click on these nodes. Yeah, there we go. Mm, I'm actually gonna have to break this because no I didn't want that I apologize I'm not gonna edit this so all these miss ah there we go you click on it and you can get another uh, you click on the actual node and then you can get um, a whole separate node which is what I want and I want to make it approximately curved Actually, I think I'm going to change this to a sharp point because that's usually how you get it. And you can move the pieces down. Oops. I'm using the keyboard right now for more accuracy to move these individual points. So that's the front. Uh, this is, of course, with everything pretty tight, so the neck's going to be right up against um, where your collarbone hits. The, the arm size is going to be right under your underarm. There's no um, ease presented in this, so when you are drafting your pattern, you're going to have to add, add an ease. Or get stretchy material. <laughs> uh, also, I should mention, this is, of course, the pattern drafting for woven material. The measurements might be a little different for... Um, for stretchy material uh, or knits so please follow your drafting instructions for knits if you're using knits instead of wovens so next we're going to do the um, the back part of the bodice because we need that to make the other part of the arm size so we can make a shoulder uh, I'm sorry um, the shoulder part of the sleeves so we're going to do a similar thing in making the pattern I'm going to actually skip over that and pretend that I've already made one. So I'm just going to really quickly draft one. Uh, just pretend I've done all of the same measurement requirements as before. I know that this is normally shorter. And I'm going to assume that there's no back dart. I do have back darts if you've seen my, if you saw my uh, pattern. So if we have left and right, I'm gonna just flip this horizontally so you can see what the arm size is gonna look like. And um, you can see the arm size diameter is this way. So we need, if I can find what happened to all my pieces, we need two measurements to start to make, uh, to make the sleeve. We're gonna need the addition of the back arm size and the front arm size. Uh, the easiest way is to just trace it using the pen tool uh, and then add them up or actually the easier way is to do it this way and have them t together and then trace it and then use the uh, measurement tool so I'm gonna do the tracing tool uh, I'm not gonna show you alternate ways because I frankly hate the alternate ways So we're gonna trace as close as we can. If you can't get that close, I would put um, a few more points just to make your life easier. Pretend I do this super accurately. I just, I'm gonna adjust this a little bit to make it look a little bit more accurate. There we go. And then I'm gonna go to the measurement tool, the area tool, and click on here. So it's 
19.345 inches, which I will totally forget if I don't write it down. So I need to remember that. I'm going to keep this here just in case I forget and, or I feel like I wrote it down wrong and I want to double check. So typically when you do sleeves, it's a little more dynamic when you're doing it uh, by hand on paper because you can take your tape measure and measure it. Um, in this case, it's a little harder to do it, so you're going to have to do a little finagling and uh, that's the fun part probably why people pay a lot of money for a drafting program that does the arm cap the sleeve caps for you so we're gonna do a sleeve uh, in this case we're gonna assume front and back rather than a uh, one size where front and back is gonna be uh, mirrored of each other so I make another another square rectangle and I want to make sure it is <coughs> See the length of your arm, which is basically at this point not actually mentioned. And let's worry about the cap. You can do uh, the long sleeve. Oh, here is 22 inches for long sleeve. We can also establish uh, different levels for a long, short, and um, three quarters inch, three quarter sleeve. But we're going to just start with long sleeve because once you know how to do this for a long sleeve, you can establish the other sleeve lengths. And then I need the, the width, which is going to be the widest width it's going to be. And which this, in this, according to this, this is the arm hole divided by four plus one inch. I imagine four E's um, for the cap, which is five and three eighths. Ugh, math. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I totally messed that up. Um, A to B. Sleeve cap. I'm also trying to re-remember how I did this. Okay, that's not right. Let's see, so I need B to C, which is going to be the garbage width, is it? I need B to B. F to G is the sleeve band. How did I figure this out last time? Man, I'm going to have to edit this out. You're going to be listening to me try to figure out this very esoteric sleeve width. Okay, well, follow your instructions to figure out the sleeve width. So, left to right or front to back and top to bottom is going to be your sleeve height. Um, and then establish a midpoint, which is going to be basically something around there, give or take. And then uh, establish The cap height. Which is gonna be basically where the that cap curve goes. And according to this, that should be that should be the five and three eighths. I, I can't remember what the three eighths was. That was wrong. Three seven five. So the cap height's here. Um, and then what you're going to have to do is 
basically your drafting uh, instructions should tell you how to figure out the curves, where the curve's going to have to be, and how far in and out it's going to be. So typically they have lines that go three quarters, that's not what I meant to do, a third of the way down. If I hold shift, it'll stay linear. And then uh, another one, two thirds of the way down. It's not what I wanted. Sometimes. And then basically, according to this, on this line, it's gonna be three quarters inch over. And then three quarters of an inch to the left on this side. Oh, yeah, you can write that. But I need to align it, so I'm, I'm going to zoom in and move this over. And then on, this, on the right side, it's going to be three quarters over to the right. of this um oh I'm an idiot okay let me just establish these first and I'm gonna put one on the inside which is gonna be a half inch this is not something I do every day by the way because I just do it once so once we have these lines here we need to go from this point to this point to this point to make the this um, pointed rectangle a uh, triangle and this and here is where we want to move the points over relative to the this diagonal line that's why I said I'm an idiot <laughs> And I am roughly estimating this, so it's going to look funky. Now, we need the pen. Uh, and now we're going to complete our sleeve. If Assuming that it's going to be a straight sleeve. If you want to have um, a narrower sleeve length, so like you have a cuff that's a certain width, say, I don't know what the width this is, 13 inches. That's not right, because that's for short sleeve. Um, just pretend that's the right width of 5.7 inches. We're ready to go ahead and make the sleeve. So I'm going to hit the pen, and I'm going to change this color. I don't know why I drafted in blue. <laughs> I mean red. So we have to click here, click and drag. And remember, it has to go up to here. It, I apologize, this looks ridiculously silly. We're gonna have to smooth this out. And then come here, click, click, and then complete it. And then we will smooth this out because this is demonstrably wrong. I'm gonna convert that to smooth so I can do a little bit of this juicing. Same thing here and here. This is probably the worst sleeve I've ever seen, mostly because I'm guessing as the width. I'm pretty sure it should be wider than this. So what we want to do is, remember the, how I traced this portion? I want to trace this again to see how long this curve just from here to here is. Um, or you could have just made the curve first and then finished the the arm side and compare it with our measurement which was supposed to be 19.345 inches which I know this is not going to be it because I'm pretty sure this is not wide enough when I made up the measurements uh, but if that if it's not wide enough you can 
or long enough, you can make this longer by uh, moving around the pieces or increasing the curve. That's not what you're supposed to do. Which should theoretically increase the total length. Again, this is not wide enough. I totally messed it up. It looks funky. When I actually did the sloper, this is how it ended up. I'll show you how you do it on here, because that's or horribly wrong. So I'm going to just trace all these points. You can see where I placed down or I clicked. I'll fix that in a second. So I press A. I press enter so I'm no longer drafting. And then I want to fix these and fix these and fix this. Pretend this is precise. And then I'm going to take the area and say it's 24 inches. So I think I needed just about that. So if I need to increase it, um, again, you would make this a deeper curve and you would make that deeper, for example. Same thing with over here. And smooth it out, of course. You wouldn't want it to look horribly deformed. So that actually added a whole inch onto uh, onto the curve with just a few minor curve changes. And obviously, that wouldn't stay. Uh, but that's how you would do the sleeve. And then you can put your measurements in the same manner with using the uh, rectangles to do to measure out where your short sleeve should be, and then um, just put lines where it's supposed to be. So say if I put, I wanted to put the short sleeve, which according to this is eight inches. And then I would group the line with the sleeve pattern. So I'm gonna put a pen here, holding shift. I'm gonna delete that measurement. So clicking on the line, holding shift, click on the sleeve, and then control G so that they all go together. And that's your short, short sleeve length. Three quarters is probably about here. Um, but that's how you use Affinity Designer to draft patterns for at least the bodice top. Um, once you want to do any type of modifications, you would use this as your baseline template 